like a monkey stand right now. <laughs> Hello people, I'm out here catching the sunset on Queens Beach in Waikiki, Hawaii. I finally grew up here and decided to try surfing since the first time I tried it in El Salvador three years back. And I think I also caught the first ever wave of my life by myself and I wasn't even standing up or anything. But I pedaled first enough to catch it and I'm so excited right now that I've decided that I'm going to spend the next 30 days practicing a little bit of surfing every single day and see how far I can get with this. I have absolutely no idea about the proper etiquette of waxing a board, but that was my best shot at it. So for my underwater recording setup, I have this, which is a floaty for my GoPro strapped to my wrist, with the other end strapped to my wrist with a hair tie. So I was out there for two and a half hours. My back is literally destroyed right now. Okay, so I wasn't able to catch any of this with my GoPro setup, but I stood up on my board on my first ever wave by myself today, and then I did it again, and again. But yeah, I'm gonna try to get more of this on the GoPro from tomorrow. This is day seven. I've gone surfing for the last six days straight. And today I decided that I'm gonna break that initial goal that I had set previously of surfing every day for 30 days. So I woke up this morning and my left shoulder was sort of acting up a little bit. And I have a long history with uh, problems with this left shoulder. So I'm gonna take the day off surfing today because I don't wanna aggravate the shoulder anymore. And I've decided that I'm also gonna regularly start doing things to help prevent shoulder injuries are training my upper back muscles and my rotator cuff muscles. I mean all this is kind of frustrating because after six days straight I was finally starting to get a hang of being on my board, getting a little more comfortable, it's finally starting to read the waves a little bit and now I have to take a day off. Hopefully I can get back in a day or two when my shoulder feels better. But what I've also learned is that Taking a day off actually surfing doesn't mean taking a day off learning. I'm gonna try to use my off day to work on my pop-up. And I'm also gonna do this one thing which experts on YouTube keep telling me is very important to learn, which is learning to read waves. And you can do that even when you're not in the ocean. So I'm just gonna go out to the beach side and check out some waves. So my shoulder was finally feeling better, figured I'd go out to surf, got my new GoPro wrist strap so I could get some videos, got the best way of my life, and then I realized I dropped my GoPro into the ocean. Unfortunately, you guys are probably not going to get to see any footage till I get another new GoPro. <laughs> Alright, this is the new GoPro I'm using. Hopefully this one won't drown. I've gone surfing 12 of the last 16 days. I think I can consistently catch shit waves at this point. So hopefully, I can get some on camera today. On the way out from the ocean yesterday, I stepped on a sea urchin, which I didn't realize at the time. And then at like 3 a.m., I realized that something was on my foot when I was going to the bathroom. And this morning when I woke up, I was in so much pain, I couldn't even walk. So I pretty much decided I'm not hiking, I'm not going surfing today, any of that fun stuff. But then, around 2 p.m., my old roommate, Khetian, called from the Netherlands because it was like 2 a.m. in the Netherlands. And I started drinking with him because he was drunk. And then at 5 p.m., 
After I hung up, I was still a little bit tipsy, I ended up going out to surf. rib cage on the left side and the diaphragm has just been bruised for the last three days. So it's not too bad walking, but I know it's gonna hurt like a <laughs> when I get on the board and start paddling. The waves are also supposed to be huge today. They're supposed to go up to like 10 feet in the evenings. They're supposed to be a little smaller, I think six to eight feet right now, which is why I'm going out in the morning. The last time the waves were this big was eight days ago. And Man, just paddling out there was the most painful thing <laughs> I've done this month. It was just took 25 minutes to get out there. And I think I legitimately hurt my shoulders trying to turtle roll when these massive waves were coming in after they broke and just trying to hold on to my board that hurt. But, but there's so much that's changed in the eight days. I feel like I'm so much more comfortable with my board and how waves break. So let's see how this turns out. Frustrating. I think I spent 95% of the time trying to get to that one spot where you're supposed to catch waves. So I get the 30 minutes to get out. Okay, so I was going over waves or going through waves or most of the times going under it. So it was not ideal. I think I stood up on less than five waves because if you messed up your timing and you waited too long, some white water wave would come and just get you and take you out there anyways. So it's not the most fun day in terms of waves caught and not a work put in. But you know what? It was educational, so I'll know what to do better next time out there in a similar situation. Another supposed day in big waves. Let's see how this goes. Day 21, this is my ninth straight day of surfing, if I'm doing the math right. My whole body hurts. Today, I learned how not to cut people off. Heading out for day 23 of surfing, and I think this is my 11th straight day in a row. I realized that in the last week or so, my shoulder and neck stopped hurting when I paddle, so I guess I finally built up that minimal strength required to paddle for extensive periods of time. There's so much that I've learned. There's so much you can learn about your positioning around the board or how to 
position yourself fast when you see a wave coming. These small things no one really tells you about, but once you learn it, you realize how important it is. Today is basically an obstacle course. Fourth of July, I'm about to go surf with a raging hangover. It's been exactly 30 days since I started surfing and today is going to be the 25th session. Let's see what I've learned. Okay, so it's actually been a full week since you saw what happened in day 30, but I figured I should shoot an outro and reflect on these 30 days while this information is still fresh in my mind and share some things I wish I had known when I was starting off, which would have probably helped. I'm not talking about technical details about surfing, because there's definitely better tutorials than this on YouTube. I'm talking about things that I never found on YouTube that I wish I had known. So number one, do not drop in on someone's weight. If you don't know what that means, which you probably don't if you're just starting, look it up. Figure out what dropping in on someone's ways means and make sure you never do it. People get pissed, it's no joke. The worst that's ever happened to me is someone took me aside for a talk, but at the same spot, two days later, I saw this guy almost beat up another guy because he dropped in on his wave. Number two, watch out for Vana or sea urchin spikes or whatever you call them whenever you're getting in and out of the water. I've had sea urchin spikes stuck twice in my toes in the last month and that is not fun. One of the times I couldn't even walk for like half a day. Number three, please use a foam top if you're starting off because your surfboard can be a weapon if you don't know how to use it and when you're starting off you probably won't know how to use it. Number four, if you're gonna start off with a foam board, especially as a guy, do not go out shirtless unless you're ready for your nipples to bleed. That shit f***ing hurts. Number five, give it time. 
If you're not learning something fast, give it a few days for you to get it. If the day's not good, give it an hour, an hour and a half. Sometimes I wait like an hour, 20 minutes for a good set and then it's just on after that. And I think that's one of my favorite things about surfing is that it helps me get into this meditative state where I'm focusing on nothing but the waves. I don't have my phone on me or any other distractions. And the only thing that's there is me, the waves, my ability to read waves, and my ability to catch waves. And it's a lot of fun once you get on some waves. Man, I just realized how beautiful that sunset is. I mean, come on, look at it. But anyways, I'm gonna end this video here. So I have not soft surfing since day 30. I've actually gone every day for the last week. So if you guys find this interesting, I can do more follow-up videos on what happens if you surf for 60 days or 90 days, try to get some alternate camera angles. As usual, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you about anything you want to know. Other than that, like this video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see more, you know the usuals. Peace out guys.